We've all learned about linear position, velocity, and acceleration, but what happens when objects start to move in circles? While there are many different curved paths an object could take, one of the most fundamental to understand is what's known as uniform circular motion. The basic idea of uniform circular motion is an object that travels in a circle at a constant speed. When it comes to circular motion, the velocity of an object is always directed along the tangent line to the circle at any given point. This tangential velocity can also be defined as a product of the radius and a quantity known as angular velocity, symbolized by the Greek letter lowercase omega, where angular velocity is simply how fast an object is rotating. What this equation tells us is that, while all parts of a rotating object rotate at the same rate, or have the same angular velocity, each point on the object has a different tangential velocity, depending on the distance from the axis of rotation. However, while the speed in uniform circular motion may stay constant, the direction is clearly changing, which means that the velocity is changing as well. As a result, because velocity is changing with time, this motion actually has an acceleration associated with it, called the centripetal acceleration, which has a value of the velocity squared divided by the radius of the circular path. This centripetal acceleration also will always point towards the center of the circle, and always points perpendicular to the object's tangential velocity. But because Newton's second law states that force equals mass times acceleration, this centripetal acceleration actually has a force related to it known as a centripetal force, given by the mass times the centripetal acceleration. Also directed towards the center of the circle, this force essentially pulls an object with just enough force to change its path, but not get sucked into the center of the circle. One of the most vital distinctions to make here is that the centripetal force is not actually an applied force, but rather a condition that needs to be met in order for objects to exhibit uniform circular motion. If there is no centripetal force, the object will just move in a straight line. Now, this force can actually come in many different forms. The tension in a string when you swing a ball above your head, the normal force of the car walls when you make a turn, or the force of gravity on Earth as it orbits the sun. In essence, objects don't apply centripetal forces, but rather some other force, be it tension, normal force, or gravity, must provide or act as the centripetal force for objects to move in circles. Once you determine what type of force is providing this centripetal force, equate the two force equations to solve for unknown quantities like the velocity or radius. While you may receive multiple different scenarios like planets orbiting or cars rounding turns, they will always involve the exact same ideas of uniform circular motion, so stick to these fundamental formulas and concepts. In reality, there's a whole new set of kinematic equations for rotational motion, but those will be the topic for a future video. For now, you can feel good that you've just finished learning about the concept of uniform circular motion.